hello hello welcome to my channel so today I want to show you what I do with what I call the ugly backgrounds this background is from when I made my book when I had leftover paint on my gel plate or uh, my brayer I just kind of slapped it down on this page and this page and all I did was um, I used this page as my get it off your chest page for the month. Um, I pretty much just picked which one was uglier than the other to just write over it and then cover it over with black. And I just put four little or five little black circles with my blending tool with the leftover paint. And then I just took my black paint Posca pen around the outside to give it a little bit of a border because what I'm going to do is instead of covering over all of it in black which I most certainly could have done however in some cases I do like to leave the uglier backgrounds in my book to remind myself of things that I don't like later on I guess so what I'm going to do for these pages is I am actually going to, I have these little lovely images here that I will write in the description below which stamp sets they come from. Though I know this is, mm, I can't even think, it's been a long working day. <laughs> so I will put it in the description below exactly which stamp sets these come from. However they are, Dilutions. And I'm very excited, guys. She just released all new things, and I just ordered them, so hopefully I should have them here within a few days, and I can maybe do a review on them. I mean, I know I'm going to love them. I love all of her stuff, but we'll see. And then, yet again, I am going to show you a way that I create a place to tuck something in my book, tuck a tag or whatnot. So to start this off, I have here, this is, I believe it's eight and a half, well here I can tell by this, yep, it's eight and a half long, and then the width was one and three quarters, and I just took my journal block and laid it on, traced the line, and then cut it out to give me this design. And then I put um, double sided tape on the back so I can stick it down. I'm gonna do that really, really quick. This page is not gonna be a magnificently beautiful page by any means. It's actually going to be the simplest of simple pages. I just as opposed to me covering over it all in black, I'm going to leave that little bit of color in the background. And, um, but when it's all together, you'll hardly see it at all. Oh goodness. Okay. Get my glue stick. And I am going to go over just my double sided tape because that's the only thing that I want to stick to the book. The only areas. Okay. Pull my book over. And I'm going to put it right up to, but not going over that center bin there. And it does hang over a bit top and bottom, but that's all right. We can snip that off later, it's no big deal. And then just to check that that is going to work out just fine. I'm gonna grab this right here. And I, yep, just like so. 
and we'll, that'll hold that in there just fine. Okay, and before I put my images on, I actually want to do a little bit of, of a design on. So, because right now I am absolutely in love with the hexagonal thing, I am going to create um, what I call the stairs going up this side of the page and to like flow over onto this. So I want to use this hexagon, which is the medium shape one from the quilted stencil. And to make these stairs, there's multiple ways to do it and I actually do it differently each time. However, start about where you want your top one to be. So because I want them to go over onto here, I'm going to make it hang over off of the curve here. And anytime you're doing this, as opposed to having a flat edge at the top, you want a point to be at the top. So you want to make sure you have a point facing up. And I'd say probably about there will work. I always go in with the pencil first and then I will outline it with my white um, paint pen. Um, I'm hoping you will be able to see this. I may just have to go in with my white paint pen so I can explain how to do it. I'll just have to be a bit more cautious. All right, so I'm gonna start about there and I'm just going to outline anywhere that the black is. And there's my first one. And because I want that to be the top step, I'm actually going to move down so I'm going to use this line here on the bottom and match it up to this line, making sure my point is still going up. Oh my goodness, just like so. And I'm going to outline all of that anywhere that the black is. Okay. And let's see, the second step would be over here. So I'll wait on that. And we'll just move down and do the same thing. Line that line up to this line. And I may end up having to go a little bit further over. We'll see for the effect I'm trying to get. I need to fill in this one over here. It's really, really simple. Just keep lining up your lines. Always making sure that the point of your hexagon is at the top. Move down to the next row. And it got a little wonky, but that's all right. I'm not worried on it. Okay, give that a minute to dry. So yes, I will need to add another here. So let's go ahead and do it. I put one there I need to put another here and so on and so forth I'm going to continue that process and then I'll show you the next step of doing this okay so for the next step in order to make these look like the three-dimensional stair steps or blocks or whatnot this is how I do it and it kind of makes it easier maybe you might find it more difficult let me put my lid on this pen really quick okay so what I do is I count the lines 
And what I mean by that is the very top of your hexagon is the first line. And then the very next point is the second line. And then the very next point, you know, and so on and so forth. But what you're going to do is you're going to start not on the first line, but the second point, which would also be the second line for me. Making sure that your point is facing upwards. You're gonna go in between where two of your hexagons meet. I know it's kind of confusing, I apologize. There's probably an easier way. I just, it's hard for me to explain it. I can show it, but I, I have a hard time explaining it. And then you're just going to outline your hexagon in that area. Just like so. And then we're gonna move over. And because there's nothing here to outline, but we do need to add this line and the ones that go down here. Just be ca cautious or conscious of that. Just outline the lines that you need. Down here. Just like so. And so we've got the top three ready. And then to move on to the next one, I count my lines down. So it's one, two, three, four. So it'll be the fifth line, which is also the point where those two hexagons you just made met, meet. And we're gonna draw the hexagon, ugh, sorry, hexagon right there in the center of. Just like so. And it does get a little wonky, especially because I'm going over the center, but it's okay. I'm gonna move over and do the exact same thing here. And then move on and do the next. Where you have complete creative freedom to do whatever you want to with these boxes. For the most part, what I do is I will usually go in and I leave the tops, what I call the tops of the steps alone. And I just create around the outside of the boxes. So for the sake of simplicity, I am going to do that. I'm gonna doodle in. Let me see, what all doodles do we have on this dress? Because I essentially want her to be here, like on the tops or the bottom step. So we've got lines and we've got circles. And then I've got circles over here. So I can just go in and add those things in in random places and make it work. I'm gonna turn my book to make my doodling a little bit easier on me. And for this one here, I'm just going to go straight down. Okay, where'd my lid go? Uh oh.
Okay, so now we're at this point, and I'm gonna be honest with you, these stairs have made the page look even more ugly, and that's okay with me. <laughs> it's a, a simple, simple page. I'm gonna go around and do a little um, dash border, uh, running stitch border, just because I wanna put it on there. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to glue her down on that step right there. I'm not coloring this in because I do want to leave it the cream. And then, so let's do that really, really quick before I change my mind and I don't want to do that. I take my double sided tape off. you to dry and then I'll outline it and then what I've done is I'll probably end up putting a quote or something up here and I'll probably go in and change these because I'm not a big fan of the doodling that I did in there I may just make them solid white um, but I could have just used a regular tag however I didn't have any up here and I was like screw it I'll just make my own so I just took my own 80 pound cardstock and let me get the measurements on this because I do not remember I think this was cut to seven inches long by three and a half inches wide so seven inches long three and a half inches wide and I just trimmed the corners to resemble a tag now, there's many things I could do. I could color this. However, I'm not going to. All I'm going to do is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna add a border around the outside because when I tuck it in here, as you can see, to me at least, it brings balance, especially when I get the border around because the cream is over here and the cream is over here kind of like the black is here and the black is here. It's just gonna balance the page out for me. And that's why I say I could have done many, many, many things to this background that I do not like. However, 99.999% of the time, this tag will be in here unless they take it out. So therefore, all you see is just a very little bit of it. It's a simple page. It's. I don't even know how long it took me to do it, to be honest with you, but it honestly didn't take that long. And I think the longest part was these because it's easier when I just sit down and do them, but I was trying to explain them to you, which makes it that much more difficult. I think I might, I do not like the circles that was created here. So I went ahead and just colored these in all white. I don't know what I'm gonna do with them just yet. I'm not completely happy with it. But this is one of those pages that I knew I wasn't gonna like from the get-go. However, I wanted to do it. I wanted to show you that there is ugly pages in my book. <laughs> and they don't always turn out 
you know, my favorites by any means. Um, so what I do, I work with what I have, you know, um, and I just make them different. With being like this, it's not so bad. I don't like how stark white this is and how cream this is. However, it'll work for me. I could always go in and color this in if I really wanted to, like maybe use the colors that you can see here. I'm not 100% certain. I probably won't because I, when I use black pages, I usually do use the cream images and then just my white paint pen. However, I have plenty of room to write on a tag for this date. And then, yeah. I'm not so sure you're going to get much inspiration from this outside of, you know, creating a little area just to tuck a tag in. There's multiple ways to have a tuck spot for a tag. And, I mean, I think this is now the, the third type way that I've kind of shown. Um, and then, you know, give it a try. <laughs> Like I said, guys, I apologize. It's been a very, very long, long day at work. Um, if you like the video, please give it a like. Um, I hope you stay safe, stay warm, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And I thank you so, so, so very much for watching as well as your super kind and super helpful comments. Okay, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.